Okay, so this is the third article that we're looking through, Building Long-Term Care Staff Capacity During COVID-19 Through Just-In-Time Learning, an Evaluation of a Modified ECHO Model. So again, as I look at this, one of the things you'll note is, once again, it is a, a structured abstract. So you can see that the design, they describe it as a mixed methods evaluation. So if you think back to class you already know some of the things that I'm going to say about this the fact that as I'm looking at it um, that as a research design which is another word for methodology that whoever trained um, this team of individuals by the look of it there's what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve of them so between the twelve of them not one of them were trained in a way that would have actually prepared them to make not make that mistake but anyway, so let's take a look. So um, you can see with their methods, they have quantitative and qualitative surveys. And that looks to be it. So let's go and then take a look now down at the methodology. So again, I'm going to scan down to the methodology. Now this is only an eight page article. Um, so when I get to the methods, you can see they start here on page two, uh, where it goes through the study design and tells me it's mixed methods again, which um, basically tells me that they don't know what they're doing. Um, depending upon, let's see, what are they trying to accomplish here? Let's, uh, the present study is aimed to determine the effectiveness of ECHO, yada, yada, in delivering just-in-time learning and best practices. So they're doing some sort of comparative analysis. My guess is, is that they're doing, um, to do a true comparison to see if this just-in-time learning was effective you would compare it from group you know some folks that had the just-in-time learning compared to the folks that didn't so it might be a quasi experimental design depending upon how well they're able to randomize but that doesn't look like what it seems that they did so um, all the participants are in this long-term care um, in the Canadian province of Ontario by the looks of it Let's see, they normally do sessions over, so they describe it in reasonable detail here in terms of what it is they actually do. They go through and talk about the curriculum a little bit. Uh, there's a supplementary table at the end, or it might not be actually in the PDF, it might be on the website so that I can see what the curriculum is. So, you know, if I wanted to try to replicate what they did, um, by the looks of it, depending upon the description of who they um, included and the fact that I've got access to the curriculum through this link right here um, and there seems to be a standard um, a standard survey let's see measures they don't tell me what the survey is and they don't tell me if they've mentioned it somewhere else so we'll have to take a look further down um, they tell me a little bit about the nature, the demographics of the people that they were working with. And so here's the outcome measure. So it's a, the satisfaction was assessed after each session. Um, and let's see, they did a self-efficacy pre and post. And some more stuff in open-ended survey, survey procedure. I still don't see anywhere where they say that the survey is in the end. Um, here's the data analysis so you can see they tell me the specific um, statistical measure that they're using uh, for the quantitative data. So they're using this Wilcoxon signed rank test um, which is designed to measure an effect size. Um, let's see and they're coding the data with NVivo, which is a qualitative data analysis software package. Uh, but they don't really say, let's see. Okay, yeah, deductive coding approach was used. So they're using deductive coding. Um, let's... Yeah, they don't tell me that much about the... Um, they don't tell me that much about how they're going about the qualitative approach other than they say they're using this Cresswell and Plainwell Clark. So a couple of things I'm going to scroll down now and look right at the bottom for. Um, they don't have... So that's all they tell you about the curriculum. So it just gives you topics. 
uh, which really doesn't help all that much. Uh, notice the instrument, the survey, is not here at the bottom. Uh, let's look for that Cresswell one that they were just talking about a second ago here now. Um, let's see. Aurora, Aurora, Aurora. Uh, here it is, Cresswell, Plano, Mixed Methods Research, Designing and Conducting. Yeah, so that's another one that, again, it doesn't tell me that much about it. So, um, you know, compared to the other ones, and if you look, this article ends on page 6. So the actual methodological portion takes up the better part of, um, let's, let's see, it starts right here ends right here so it's all of that side all of that side so a little bit better than a page one out of six so what's that going to be 17 18 percent of the actual article is taken up with the document um, given the fact that you know they've got all of this extra space here and all of this extra space here when you think about page length in a journal um, the fact that they didn't include the survey uh, is a little bit disappointing. So other than the errors that they've got in here about, you know, the mixed methods aspect of it, um, the fact that they really don't, a lot of this, they don't provide enough detail that I could actually go and replicate this in a long-term care facility here in, uh, you know, Solano County. Um, it meets, says to me that, you know, it's, it's, of the three that we've looked at, this one is probably much, by far the weakest of the three. Some positive aspects about it in terms of judging the quality, but as I'm looking through for some of the items here, like even when I'm looking at the the way in which they're doing the, the quantitative analysis when they talk about um, down here, I don't see anything relating to, um, you know, statistical significance or um, confidence level or anything like that, which would be, again, statistical measures that are designed to ensure the reliability and validity of the, uh, uh, of the research. So those are things that would concern me a little bit. Um, you know, as I'm looking at the results and just skimming through here, I'm seeing some p-values. So you can see p is uh, less than 0 0.01, which means that this particular finding was highly significant. But I would have liked to have seen some more of that up in the methodology section uh, because I don't think they've done a good job at let, giving me the detail that I would need for this. So that's another one to look at that you can sort of review yourself and uh, decide. And then as you've watched the video, have you noted some of the same things that I've noted? Um, the other thing that I didn't mention earlier, but I, I'm looking at here now, um, as I'm looking at this particular item, um, I'm trying to see how many people there were in total uh, because while they give me a sense as to how many people completed the survey, so there were 252 individuals that registered for ECHO and by the looks of it, 160 actually attended the weekly sessions and then 133 actually filled out the surveys. So of the p total number of people that were in this particular sample, there were, what, that's not quite 60% of the people actually uh, participated, but of those who attended all the weekly sessions, um, you know, it's, it's quite high, 133 over 160. Um, but then again, uh, I'd like some information, and they may have told me this in the introduction section here, because you'll notice it doesn't actually have a real lit review, it just has an introduction here. Um, but it may have told me sort of how representative this is. So this is a, um, you know, long-term care facility and um, in Ontario. Now, is this all of them? Is this just one network of them? You know, I'm sure the number of people working in long-term care in the province of Ontario is more than 252. What does that represent over the entire population? You know, those are the types of things that you would, it would help to know to determine the statistical significance of this and the confidence in which they can report their results. So that's all three of them to review and hopefully this has been useful to you.